Shrek, and today we're doing another fun versus video. So, I just got in my Thermal Hunter. I think that the Thermal Hunter is actually a really nice blaster. It might not be perfect, but nobody's perfect. Or, as I like to say in the comments section all the time, when people point out that I'm wrong, nobody's nerfed. Very few people will appreciate how inherently clever that is, but I've, I've made my peace with that. Um, anyway, this is a Busby blaster, and this is a nerf blaster, which makes this a battle of the brands. But uh, no, they're, they're very comparable blasters. They have a lot in common now. The reason that I'm using this one is I actually don't have any stock Elite Alpha Troopers that are like stock stock. Uh, I've got a lot that have been tweaked and tinkered with or have body kits on them of some sort and variety. So uh, the Thermal Hunter is still completely stock. Nothing has been done to tweak or tinker with it. It comes, of course, uh, as a $25 package. I said 20 in my original review. That was a mistake. Uh, that, I have a good reason for that mistake, but it's a mistake nonetheless. Uh, the reason for that is that that was what I think I was told at Toy Fair would be the price. But uh, obviously, as they tweaked it and they brought it to market and it had all of its various packaging and painting stuff attached to it, it became slightly more expensive. But they were not willing to let go of the thermal scope gimmick. So, this is essentially a pump action sentinel or realistically just a pump action springer. Now, the features are that it has kind of wonky ergonomics, but it's incredibly inexpensive. The pump grip is great. It's really far out front. However, so is the magazine well. I find this to be a highly uh, funky sort of release, but it's, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can get pretty good at kind of popping it with your thumb, so to speak. That's uh, not so, so bad. Um, the, the biggest issue for me is the size of the handle and the stock. However, 25 United States dollars. Now, when the Elite Alpha Trooper originally came out, it was like seven bucks because it was still on sale for the UPC for the original Alpha Trooper. The Elite Alpha Trooper came out at 20 United States dollars. This one, you can tell, even has its stickers on it. As a Kohl's exclusive, this one is a package deal that retails for 45. However, a lot of people wait and get them for less when Kohl's goes on sale. Kohl's is a really bad retailer in that way and that everything, including the clothes at Kohl's, is marked up because they basically figured out that the, uh, the fun marketing gimmick where you put something on sale and then it feels good to buy it because you got such a deal uh, can be completely alleviated if you just put the thing on sale or make it more expensive in the first place. So I think that that's kind of crummy for a company, but that is uh, how Kohl's does all of its products, and unfortunately, that kind of bleeds into the Nerf world as well. So what could have very easily been like a $25, $30 package, given the things that come inside it, became a $45 package because Kohl's always wants to give people Kohl's bucks or discounts or seasonal sales or what have you. So I've bought most of mine at 20 United States dollars. However, for the purposes of this review, uh, I am going to say that the Elite Alpha Trooper sells for 20 because that's what you should be paying for it. It's what the original one costs, and even this repaint often sells for that amount of money. So it comes with two magazines, but they're really bad magazines, so they're almost not like worth including in that price. They are six round magazines. Um, as a fun aside, I'm currently saving six round magazines to build a chair out of them. I think that, that would be really fun and I can't think of anything else good to do with them. So in that regard, the Thermal Hunter wins. It has a better magazine in the sense that it has a 10 round magazine and it's cross compatible. Unfortunately, the Thermal Hunter is not cross compatible with Nerf magazines in its stock form. That's gonna be a really easy fix and as I demonstrated in the modification guide, if you just press really hard, you will get a click, but then the darts feed kind of weird. There's like a funky offset there and it's very tight to get them to eject. However, the Elite Alpha Trooper is locked. Somebody primed it in the package. Ah, uh, no. So luckily I, I modify these and that's not the end of the world, but it will take the Busby magazine pretty well in its stock form. This one is suffering some pretty egregious performance hindrances just because uh, its spring has probably been compressed in the workshop and the storage room for close to like two years now. Um, that is unfortunate, but it came with a stock and these two magazines. However, they're almost worth discounting because this is a Spectre stock and is one of the worst stocks ever. It is really, really bad. So that's hot garbage. And honestly, the six round magazines aren't that great either. But 
What I want to compare in this versus video is the two blasters themselves more or less naked. If we take the stock and if we take the stock that this one comes with out of the equation and the scope that a lot of people think is very cool, self-included, out of the equation we have two pump action springers, both of which are relatively inexpensive and cost around 20 United States dollars. The ergonomics become immediately apparent that they are very different. If we line up their triggers, this is a much longer blaster, almost needlessly so, so it has a little bit more uh, dead space so to speak, in the uh, the barrel, it will induce more drag. Again, the, uh, the magazine is in a much easier to operate place here. Not only is it closer to your operating hand, but you can reach the magazine release, which is ambidextrous, to be fair, on both blasters, but since the magazine release is reachable here, you don't have to move your hand as long as you're like priming through. You can come back, it's not a heavy enough magazine, and you can flip it out with one finger and then load your next one and push forward. Now, the other big thing that a lot of people aren't gonna think is a big deal, but for old school HVZ players is, is that the Elite Alpha Trooper has slam fire. Slam fire increases your rate of fire by allowing you to fire by pushing forward and kind of like pumping the blaster. Now that's a less accurate way to fire and I don't like it as much as traditional operation. However, it, uh, it is a nice feature and it's really good for like horde pushes. Um, whereas the Thermal Hunter does not do that. The Thermal Hunter will actually lock up if you try and prime it with the trigger. It will not and then if you pull the trigger while it's primed and push forward, it actually doesn't do anything and then you have to release the trigger fully and re-pull it to get it to fire. So not designed for that. As far as their overall profiles go, again, the Thermal Hunter is longer and if you remove its stock, it becomes much, much more similar in terms of its scope. They both have equitable amounts of rail attachment space on top and then uh, I prefer wrapping my hand around the Elite Alpha Trooper, I think that this is a far more ergonomic setup for me, but this isn't bad. Normally when I talk about knockoff blasters, I mention that they're plastic and their overall construction is not as nice, and while it's definitely not like as detailed as the Elite Alpha Trooper in terms of like some of its logos and what have you, uh, it it's a very fine quality of plastic. Busby has gotten better and better about that. So the, uh, the battle comes down to like performance and the Thermal Hunter actually wins. Out of the package, the Thermal Hunter is a much better performance piece. I mean, the darts are flying at least like 80, 90 feet angled, whereas an Elite Alpha Trooper gets about 60 feet angled, 65 or so. Um, however, your modification potential for both of them is kind of unknown. You can take an Elite Alpha Trooper to a very nice level. Obviously, it's something that I do very frequently on the channel. I use my Elite Alpha Troopers with various body kits, with various spring kits, with various like uh, pump grip uh, augmentations to make them much nicer and it's one of my favorite blasters of all time. So with that inherent bias aside, I'm totally willing to give performance to the Thermal Hunter. Uh, people who have been making springs for these Busby blasters have figured out that they can really take some punishment in that regard and it's pretty easy to get them up to some very, very high performance thresholds, at least in terms of FPS. The smoothness of operation in this case is less forgiving than the Alpha Trooper, but because it doesn't have as many features, it also never gets half primed. It doesn't do like the weird lockup mechanism in that circumstance. Now, uh, it'll be interesting to see if people try and shorten this up by taking some of this off. I think there's plenty of room for like a flashlight in here if you wanted to go that route. Like this could be a very cool blaster when all is said and done and it should paint up just as nicely. I wish that the handle was nicer, but performance on this one is much, much better. Price again is relatively similar, so it's hard. It's hard for me to choose which one. And that's the problem with these versus videos is that oftentimes we get to this point in the versus video where I feel like since it's a versus, a battle of the blasters, I have to look at the two things and choose. And sometimes the answer is easy. I would love to just default gut reaction tell you the Elite Alpha Trooper is the best Springer slash Nerf blaster that you can buy at this price point, period. It requires the least love to make it very good and it, no batteries required. Like there are a lot of things that I love about this blaster. I think that it's one of the best HVZ blasters of all time, including like currently, even in a world with Nemesis in it. Uh, Nemesis? Hard to say. Uh, however, the big difference is that uh, not all Coles even stock these. You can sometimes find them online, and again, they've got that weird hiccup where you have to wait for a Coles sale, whereas the Thermal Hunter is on shelves right now. 
and it's sweet, out of the box. No modifications required, although I'm sure that it could take them, and I have every intention of pursuing that in the, uh, in the near future. But uh, the Thermal Hunter is really good. It's a lot of blaster for 25 United States dollars. I, uh, I think that the best testament to it is if this was all you got, I would still recommend purchasing one. So it's super cool that you get a very unique, very different scope uh, in addition to that. So take that as you will, um, but I think that the Thermal Hunter is a serious contender, and I'm gonna call it a straight draw. I think that they are both solid pump action primaries, and I love them both. I have a lot more history with the Alpha Trooper, but I am looking forward to putting some field time in on the Thermal Hunter. So uh, without any more beating around the bush, I think that it's a draw. What one does very well, the other does poorly in a few different categories and, and quantas, so uh, that should conclude it, except uh, this is a sponsored video, and I like to put the sponsorship at the end, so I would appreciate it if you would check out these three products from a company that sent them to me to share them with you. So, all three of these samples were sent from a company called The Fun, with multiple E's. I will link to them in the description box below, as well as thank them for their sponsorship of the channel. They wanted a product review of their funky mini quadcopter called the Discover TX4. It comes with a set of extra propellers, a set of extra roll cage, I'll get to that in a second, and a screwdriver. Uh, and it's got a controller, a miniature 1S LiPo battery, and it's pretty stupid proof in all honesty. It is a fun little mini drone, very hobby grade, very easy, but because of this funky roll cage that it's got all the way around its propellers, I have crashed it a lot, but it is easy to fly inside and it doesn't get damaged at all because no matter what you do to it, it just kind of bounces. Like, that's a cool feature. Doesn't bounce as well that way, but this way, oh man, like, as someone who's crashed a lot of drones, that is very satisfying. Alrighty guys, so these are two products that I was just sent from The Fun Toys. You can even see their logo up here. This is a bubble machine, this is a fog machine, and yes, we are totally selling out. Between the drone, the fog machine, and the bubble machine, like these should be very, very exciting products. I think that they're all gonna work very well, and they're very affordable. Like, this is 100% sponsored content. I thought very hard about how I could make this organic, so I'm going to shoot bubbles and fog, preferably foggy bubbles, with Cortana, because that's what we've got. So I went ahead and plugged these into my generator's extension cord. They are both powered by AC. So we'll flip this one on. Uh, and then I guess, I think that they both have on switches. So this one can be on. This is, I think, the remote control version. And then this is the automatic version. Now, before we do either of those things, we have to come over here. I purchased these on Amazon as well, so I actually got all of this off Amazon. This is the smoke machine and the thing from The Fun. These were honestly just like cheap bubble fluid. I'm sure you could make this with like literal soap and water, but Amazon has prime shipping and uh, busy people get lazy sometimes. So let's, me without a knife, can you guys believe it? It's definitely soap and water, boys, because that's what it tastes like. So we're gonna go ahead and fill our tray just a little bit here. As an added bonus, this bubble thingy comes with a wand. So if you wanted to blow bubbles the old school, non-automatic way, you could come in like this and do like so. So this one is now primed and ready. And I've actually never, I've worked in a lot of haunted houses, but I've never run the fog machine before. So this is going to be very interesting for me because I don't even know what goes into this, but this is Halloween party fog fluid. And it also has to be kind of opened up. We're gonna see if we can't make a spigot here, kind of, sort of. And then I assume that this is some sort of pump here, but we're gonna put this into the reservoir. I feel like this one has the potential to get hot just because of how much uh, power it draws. It also had a grounding cable. Let's go ahead and, without something to vent the pressure, <coughs> the pressure, I'm almost squeezing the fog fluid into here. It's interesting that it's clear because the fog should in theory come out foggy, right guys? But uh, that is full now. Hopefully you can't overfill it, and then we'll put this back on. So it's on, it's primed, and the fog will come out of the front. I'm trying to feel if it's warm, but I guess 
It is, but with this uh, vent, it seems very safe. This should not be super duper warm at all. We should just be able to come in here. I'm gonna put it in RC mode for giggles because I have a remote control for both of these. Now the fog machine, you press this button. Oh boy, and it does the fog. Just as much as you want, I guess. And then the bubble machine has a little like garage door opener, I kid you not. It, it even has lock and unlock on it. So let's try unlock. And it looks like unlock turns this on. <laughs> These are surprisingly effective. I could run a whole birthday party and then you can stop it with the lock thing. So on. Oh boy, all right, on. And then this is almost like a foot panel. I've done enough work with hand tools to know how to run this. All right, so now we have some gnarly bubble smoke. Oh, we should turn this on. I am filming in 4K. Hopefully you guys can see that like, shooting through this stuff is gnarly. I feel like if I was using bigger darts, it would be better. I feel like I need to have a Halloween party now. Do, 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 yeah. You can't even see the darts. This is mysterious and cool. I might bring the fog machine to an HVZ for some dramatic drac entrances. Is that, is that pretentious? It might be just a little, oh, you can protect it, wow. All right, so let's kill the bubbles and the fog. And so those have both stopped. And we have emptied Cortana. So that is good as well, but uh, I wonder what like a minute or so of constant use cost us in terms of our fuel. Actual nothing. Wow, this is cool. This is really cool. So uh, again, like I honestly don't know what this company expected selecting me for their, uh, their sponsored content, but what they get is me using their products with Nerf guns and reviewing them in real time. They're definitely cool products. They're honestly pretty affordable. So for the Halloween season, I don't think that there's anything wrong with upping your game with the bubble machine or the fog, the combo of which is kind of fantasy spooky. I'm not sure what I like more, but uh, that is really, really neat. Thank you guys very much for watching. Check out all the Amazon links in the description box. Uh, and, and don't hate the player. Hate the game.